Hey, look, I got the green screen this time. Well, I'm actually revisiting the tungsten episode. Now, I didn't realize the first time that this is a ridiculously sensitive topic, and some of you guys are like, wow. But here we go. I'm putting uh, five different pieces up here, and we're going to see how well they perform. In a completely unbiased, no branding, no nothing, just simply colors, the tungsten, everything else like that, and uh, we'll see how they perform. Check this stuff out after this intro rolls. So let's roll all of our tungsten in here and show you what we're testing up today. We're going to start with our multi-mix pink color, which is meant to replace the 2% thorated red. Then we have E3 purple, one of my favorites, 2% lanthanated, which is extremely popular among welders. Q4, which is also supposed to be a replacement for 2% thorated red. And then we have 2% serrated, which is a little less common, but still I see it being used quite often. Now, if you're not sure about 2% serrated is or the gray band, it used to be colored orange and somewhere in the middle of all this. Uh, it switched over to gray. So uh, just in case you haven't kept up with your color codes. Now we're going to put all of these to the test. Now I'm going to ensure that they're actually clamped down and the spacing on the torch height or at least the torch body spacing to the piece that we're firing into is set at a quarter inch. I'm going to stack two coupons and it's going to stay this way the entire time. Now I'm going to sharpen all these pieces of tungsten up and I'm going to use the Arc Zone Sharpie Tungsten Sharpener because it's going to offer the most uniformity to it. Now there's going to be probably a bit of a gripe in here because this happened on Instagram, but this is the result that it gave for sharpening. And if we get in really close, it looks kind of beat up. And when we get closer in some of the samples, you'll see that it's, uh, it's pretty gnarly. And in some of the actual samples and when we get really high def and close up, it looks like they're actually sharpened improper. But this is the result of the tungsten sharpener that we used, so that's just kind of how it is. Now let's uh, kind of dispel a little bit of a myth here about the balling theory. Now the balling theory is pretty simple, straightforward. They usually say tungsten needs to be balled in order to be used on AC. Now the answer to that is not necessarily, and here's why. Now there's a couple of key players that directly affect the amount of balling that happens on the end of the tungsten there. So aside from the tungsten type itself, some are more susceptible to it than others, but the biggest key player above all is the AC balance. So the practice of balling is based on the tungsten type and the amount of positive AC balance. And this is something you need to test your settings with, uh, with the tungsten that you have and on the machine that you have in order to determine how much it's going to actually ball on your settings. Now that we kind of have that out of the way, let's talk about some tungsten and let's put it all to the test here. Now each one of these uh, pieces of tungsten is going to be fired the exact same way and I'm going to set my spacing with a coupon the exact same way, which is set it at an eighth of an inch above our piece of metal that we're firing into. Now we're going to take the PowerTig 210 EXT from Everlast and I'm going to set it up with a 30% positive AC balance at 60 hertz and 125 amps and we're going to fire these all for one minute. Now I'm checking a lot of different things here. I'm going to start with the best arc start here and we're going to get it super slow frame by frame and you'll see a little timer down at the bottom that says exactly how long of elapsed time we've got here. Now these results are definitely a toss up because right off the get go at three hundredths of a second you got E3 with a pretty faint arc and a solid cone already developing where at one tenth of a second the 2% serried comes around a little stronger cone but no arc and eventually Q4 comes in at the same time where E3 gets a really solid arc and then pink comes around and it will get a solid arc but then 2% length was holding up the rear but when it does fire it comes in solid so this is a bit of a toss up but I'm going to have to assign this one to E3 purple because it fired first before lanthanated did even though lanthanated came in stronger when it did fire now you can go back and review that if you want to decide for yourself now on the right here we've got our settings once again this is what we're burning out we're gonna burn for an entire minute here and I'm gonna you know it took a while to focus in and look at this footage here you can go back and check it out again if you'd like but I'm studying a few different things here primarily I'm looking at the size of the cone the focus of the cone and things like this how soon it develops its uh, its ball basically so the pink was uh, first one to actually really get its ball after the purple did and it, it did quiver a little bit which was a little strange but at least it happened early on because if it doesn't happen early on it's gonna kinda mess up your weld about midway through so we're probably about 30 seconds into this burn right now and Q4 is finally starting to come around it got a little quivery you know and then finally our 2% lanthanated it's gonna get a nice little flat spot here which was a little weird to see especially close to the end of the burn so at almost a full minute it's finally starting to deform and, and you know make its shape but after the burn is up let's take a look at all of these pieces here super close up 
and you probably wouldn't even see half of this stuff to the naked eye, which is really fascinating to look at it. But you can see some of them are lopsided, some of them form nice. This one here has a tail. <laughs> so we'll just kind of uh, take a look at everything we've got here. Here's our colors, just as they burn. Pink obviously is, uh, well, that's a pretty super deformed, even though it was relatively focused. I personally thought purple was the most focused, but it is a little lopsided there, and that was most likely uh, from the backside of the camera angle where we couldn't see. 2% lanthanated blue, nice and uh, good formation of the tungsten there, and it was very focused the entire way through. Our Q4, it's a little bit lopsided, and of course our gray has a tail. So out of all of this, reviewing the footage and now reviewing the results, of the tungsten after we pull them, I'm going to assign the most stability or the best stability out of that arc. And this is a very, very tough decision, but once again, based on the footage and the final result here, I'm gonna give the best stability to our 2% lanthanated blue at 3070 balance, 60 hertz, and 125 amps. Now on to test number two. The only thing we're gonna change up here is the AC balance. We're gonna run this at 50-50. So setting up the machine to 50%, everything else will stay exactly the same. Now since we mentioned earlier, 50% AC balance is going to ball the tungsten, so this is what we're gonna call the ball test. We're gonna line them all up the exact same way and check out these arc starts. Now all of them, right off the get-go, they're all kind of struggling to find their spot, and that's kind of normal, but at 0.13 seconds, we finally got our 2% blends, both gray and blue, fired, but very violent. When Q4 came in nice and tight, finally the pink at 2 tenths of a second fired right in, nice and refined. E3 was pulling up the rear, but when it finally did fire at 3 tenths of a second here, it was pretty violent. So out of all this, you see the focus and refinement out of all of them. Pink was the one that seemed to hold it the best uh, out of all of it. So the best arc start on this one is going to the pink side. So let's run another burn on these. Go for another full minute. You see uh, some of these cones, some of these arcs, they're relatively violent. Some of them, they're obviously a little less stable than the 30% uh, balanced version of it. But all of them form their ball relatively fast, which is good. A uh, bit of fluttering, but the biggest thing I'm paying attention to here is the cones. Whereas you see the top three here that we highlighted, they're all projecting right, and they're all starting to wander just a little bit, which is a... Uh, uh, pretty difficult to weld with that. We were looking for the most stability uh, that we can get out of it. So now it's down to the E3 purple and our multi bigs pink, which our purple side has a really nice tight arc cone on it. When you compare it to the pink side, it's just a little bit smaller. It's got a bit more focus on it. And of course, we're going to pay attention to the stability of the cone and uh, how many times it's going to flutter and flicker and all the rest of that stuff. And I'm also paying attention to the burn back. Now, if you notice, they all started with the same height, but the purple is still sticking out a little bit while the pink burned back up. So it really boiled it down to here, which one of these fluttered less and kept its stability. Now counting all of that, pink was the winner in that one, in my opinion, because it had the most stability despite the fact that it burned back more. Now, I initially forgot to shoot the resetting of all of the tungsten. Now, what that basically means is I dropped every single one of them back down after they burned back. I reset every single one of them to the proper eighth inch height for that we're running for on this test. Now, since this is such a sensitive topic, you get to watch me talk about this and tell you about it because I don't want somebody going back and picking the video apart and be like, you cheated on the tungsten test or something like that. You know, I mean, you know how it goes, right? It's YouTube. <laughs> so check this out. Uh, here we go. Everything's been reset all at the eighth inch height. Let's watch these arc starts and see which one of these is the most stable on 50-50 balance. All right, now get ready because this one is going to be left up to you. Now, I know I did all of the uh, review and analyzing and everything like that, so now it's your turn. So we're going to fire these up in slow motion, and you're going to be the one who tells me which one is the best one. Here we go. Very interesting. Now, up top here, you're going to see this little pop-up here. That's a poll. That's for you to vote on which one you think is the best arc start. You can also comment below. I know I have a pretty good idea of which one I'm going to say, but I'm not going to say it. So here's what we need to look at. Everything that we were looking at before, stability of the arc, direction of the arc, focus of the arc, all the rest of that good stuff. And well, you know, maybe we'll pay attention to some of the burn back, some of the fluttering, some of the quivering. You know, I can see there's a couple of issues with the gray, with the green, blue, purple's pretty good, pink's pretty much solid. So we're just going to run these ones out here and you can tell me which one you think is the best as soon as these uh, as soon as these ones wrap up getting uh, doing their burn here
definitely interesting results. Now, here we go again, another poll that's going to pop up here. That's where you get to vote on which one is the best, most stable arc at 50-50 balance. And you can also drop a comment below if you want to join the conversation. So there's you some results. <laughs> Hopefully that satisfies you just a wee bit more than the first one. And, you know, if I really have to go back and revisit this again, I will go over it and talk about how to sharpen it. I'll, I'll friggin', uh, you know, go over all the arc starts and all the rest of that stuff again. And maybe I'll actually wire a machine into my CNC machine to actually make all of this happen. And, uh, I don't know, see which one actually welds better. I mean, maybe if you guys actually want to see that. I mean, we'll find out who watches these videos all the way through to the end, right? Ha! All right, so here we go. <laughs> You're probably not going to switch your tungsten based on this result. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll find out that there's a better one for you. Maybe you'll find out that there's maybe a lesser one for you. Maybe you find out the one you were using was not so good, or maybe you're not going to change at all. I have no idea. But either way, there's some straight up, no, you know, preference, completely unbiased results, and there's the ones that made it through. So take that as you will. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching as always. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel for more really awesome content. And yes, if I have to revisit this one again, I'll revisit this one again. All right, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Make sure you check the description and the, the uh, links and all the rest of that good stuff. Have a good one.